Davis. Woo! And he's looking good. Mr. Clark Kent here in his Superman t-shirt. Yeah, you know, Guy Mesger has not fought in the Pride Batting Championships since the last Beasts from the East. And uh, he, he wasn't real happy with the decision loss that he got uh, with Ricardo Arona. So I think he's got something to prove tonight when he steps in the ring with Norihisa Yamamoto. I think so too. I got to say, Guy has many times controversial losses. Man, this crowd loves him. Oh, yeah. See that jump? Superman. And there he is, Kazushi Sakuraba, who will be cornering Yamamoto. That's cornering, that is, yes. <laughs> I hope he's going to it against this guy here. Guy Mesger, extremely popular here in Japan, probably from his exploits with the Pancrase organization, where he was king of Pancrase. And Norihisa Yamamoto coming from the Rings organization. Now, let's see some action here. Yeah, Yamamoto is coming off a loss like most people have when they stepped in the ring with Bob Sapp. Yeah. Uh, which he was uh, a, a tough uh, victim to Bob Sapp. And it was April of this year. And when I asked him about that fight several times, he said, why do you always got to bring that up? <laughs> he didn't like it, I knew. <laughs> But it's, it's really no shame to lose to a guy that's that huge and that dangerous. Uh, guy obviously isn't as big as Bob Sapp, but Guy probably has far superior technical skills to Bob Sapp, and for sure he's got way more experience than the young Morgan's last opponent, Bob Sapp. So um, this is going to be interesting. Ready? Do you think Yamamoto is in a damned if you do, damned if you don't position? Because if he goes to the ground, Guy has really got a great submission arsenal. But if he stands up, Guy is a former world champion in kickboxing. Um, yes, he has. Uh, Yamamoto's got to win this fight. The only win he had was against Jan Norch. There we go, right straight already. Uh, which was a K1 fight. He won against Amar, and that was, yeah, not very surprising. But uh, he's got to win this fight. Well, Guy assured me that uh, he has better hair than Yamamoto. Uh, but he did say that Yamamoto was ugly. And uh, that he uh, he can submit Yamamoto, but Yamamoto can't submit him. And Mesger really hammered the point that he wants a rematch with Ricardo Arona. Yeah, he was really talking about that, huh? He wants to set the record straight. And nice follow-up there with the left low kick. Yeah. Mesger really executing a great kickboxing match. Mesger being such a good wrestler, he doesn't have to worry about waiting for the other guy to drop down for a takedown or something because he's got such good defense for that. Yeah, if I was, uh, yeah, nice combination there. Uh, also, uh, with the right low kick inside the leg of Yamamoto would be a good weapon. Yeah, he's real relaxed. He's picking his shots. Uh, speaking of relaxation, Yamamoto told what? us the other day that he likes to date women to relax. That's a good way. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you're single. Uh, yeah, it's an extremely good way to relax. We asked him what he knew about Guy Mesger, and he said he is handsome. Hey, he's right. If he puts on the glasses... He's exactly Clark Kent right there. Ooh, nice right. Turns his body. And he's got to do that again with the follow it up with the left hook. Yamamoto did say that uh, even though he didn't know much about Guy Mesger as a fighter, that Sakuraba, his corner man, knew quite a bit about him because they fought uh, a couple of years ago. And, he's, and Sakuraba said that Guy Mesger is an extremely well rounded fighter, which he is. Yes, that was also a, a real good fight that guy had. Uh, I actually thought that the, he won that fight. 
there was some uh, strange things going on at the time. They said it was going to be one round, but then suddenly it changed to two rounds. And here we go. Looking for the shot now, guy. Yeah. Uh, with Yamamoto being a southpaw, it's going to be that straight right hand that's going to do damage. And Guy Mesger has got a great right hand. As a matter of fact, Guy Mesger put Chuck Liddell on the deck with that right hand. And that was last year, and it almost knocked Chuck off. Of course, Chuck came back to defeat Guy, but Guy can bang. Oh, yeah. Oh, combination again. That's the thing about guys, that good combinations. I would work the body. Oh, yeah, look at the left front game. Okay, boss. Yeah. Realistically, if Yamamoto beats Guy Mesger, that's got to be considered an upset. Totally. Uh, I can't see it happen, but that would be a total upset. Well, I'm actually surprised that Yamamoto is just standing up with Guy the way he is without even trying to engage a, what's this, a back fist, back knuckle? Yeah, he probably saw some old karate kung fu movies. Yeah. He's keeping his distance all the time, so that's a good thing that Yamamoto is doing. Yeah. It's, it's impressive that he's using that distance and that movement around. He's not backing straight up, he's moving around. Yamamoto exhibiting a little bit of confidence here, even though he's losing the stand-up game. And he's getting lumped up as a result. Yep, that right straight, if that comes a few times, a few more times, it's going to end the fight. There we go, left straight, nice hit. Great shot. I should go to the body also, right straight to the body, I followed up with the left hit to the head. Perfect for uh, somebody. Uh, uh, an opponent who fights in the southpaw stance. Yeah, Guy Mesger is a lion's den fighter, and that is Ken Shamrock's well-known gym. And he said that he has got so much respect for the master instructor there, Ken Shamrock. Looks like Guy got thumped. Did he get thumbed accidentally? Accidentally, yeah. A yeah. finger or a thumb in the eye. Yeah, but he's okay. Ooh, whoops. Guy slipped in the canvas. And they're banging away, and Guy gets the double underhooks. Is Guy going to take it down here, do you think, or is he going to continue to kick the I, I don't know. Guy is a good wrestler, so he might take it down to the ground and ground and pound with him, especially he's got both underhooks now. Mesger said that he gets more damage sparring than fighting. It's true. I think uh, in, in every great school, every great gym, um, you spar hard, boy, and that's boy, most of the boy. time it's, uh, it takes more of the body. You, you, you spar more rounds. I mean, every training is, what, 10, 15 rounds at least? And uh, we got to fight. It's a 20-minute fight, so he's absolutely right in that. The crowd really wants to see that break, and they got one. Yeah, especially now. I come concert, that's the body shot. That's what I wanted to see. And then follow it up. I, I think uh, uh, Yamamoto's signature win so far in his career was against Valentine Overing. But I would have to say that Guy Mesger's signature win was against UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz, who had choked out with a guillotine choke. Um, both men really do need to get a W tonight to really continue further in the sport. Yep, it's a strategical game right now. Um, I think this is almost like the opposite of the previous match we saw where Randleman came out and loaded up on every shot and missed quite a few of them. Mesger is, is picking his shots and trying to set up the big... Nice. That was good. Ooh, kick to the head. Good left high kick and Yamamoto's in trouble here. Mesger got a clean knockdown with that right hand and Yamamoto should be tying up Mesger here. He should be tying him up into a clinch because he doesn't want to try and box with Guy Mesger in close on the ropes like this. Nice there. Oh, he could take a shot. And Mesger backing up, content to try and 
pick Yamamoto apart. You're tough. You're tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> Yamamoto is tough. I, I'm actually gaining more respect for Yamamoto for his performance, even though this is not his game. Um, and, and the good thing about Guy here is he keeps sticking to his game plan. He, he's going with the, the right straight to the body. I'm telling you, if he's going to hit it again, this is good for him. Uh -huh. Knees, go to the body. Yamamoto's getting more tired. That's what you want to hit. Bring the hands down. Whoa. And Yamamoto's keeping pushing it. Ooh, there's Guy got caught. A little far. Whoa, nice kick. Spinning back kick. I love that move. Yamamoto got in a little too close for that uh, strike to have a lot of potency, but still, Mesger went ahead and threw it. Nice drive straight again. You see Yamamoto's feeling it. Telegraph that kick. Mesger leaned back and missed easily. Two feet. Nice. Well, one thing I got to say about Yamamoto, he's countering when Guy Mesger steps into stroke, even though he's missing a lot. Yeah, um, one thing for sure, his training with uh, Sakuraba has paid off. Yes, yes it has. <laughs> yeah, both of them need their one, two-minute break now, and then step it up again in round number two. Well, round number two has been notoriously a very good round for Guy Mesmer. As a matter of fact, in his fight with Arona, uh, Guy Mesger almost knocked Arona out with a roundhouse kick to the face. So Guy Mesger isn't just a one-round fighter. He can fight dangerously in every round, although he did get tired in his uh, fight with Arona in the third round. But there was a lot of uh, extenuating circumstances in Guy Mesger's last fight here because September 11th, that awful tragedy that happened in New York, had just happened less than two weeks before the Beast from the East had won. So that took a lot out of a lot of the fighters from... Uh, North America, United States, Canada, Gary Goodrich fought, and it really affected Guy Mesger because he knew a lot of people in New York. But uh, he's coming in with a clean slate tonight, and he's just pretty much boxing perfectly. Yeah, he's doing everything perfect. It's uh, Yamamoto just being very tough, can take a shot, he took that kick to the head, he had some real strong fights, he's also look at that combination there too. So it's, it's not about Guy, it's not about Yamamoto. Yamamoto is still is playing a good game. Uh, guy is obviously way better, he's more technical, but Yamamoto is trying to keep the distance and avoid the points, although he's getting hit. You know, it's, he, he worked hard. Well, there's one thing. Uh, when two guys respect each other too much, sometimes it can take the emotional sting out of the fight. And they're touching gloves an awful lot in this fight to show that there's no hard feelings or anything. That was a clean knockdown there by Guy Mesger with that right. Ooh. And look at that, that roundhouse kick and the knee was blocked. Now Yamamoto exhibiting very good defense here. Otherwise he would have for sure been knocked out with that right uppercut blasting. Yamamoto could take a shot. He's got pretty good defense and Mesger blasting in. It wasn't a real clean shot on the button, but it hit him. It was a lot about the footing of Yamamoto, more than, more than about the accuracy of the punch from Mesger. Yeah, but that kick was yeah. a beautiful kick. And here in the clinch, he had some beautiful uppercuts. Till now, it's a very strategic fight. That's one thing for sure. Uh, round two, hopefully, like you said, he's going to come out blazing like he did with the Rona. Yeah. I see if he can find a knockout. I think if, uh, if you're going to use the first round of a pride fight for a feel-off, which is a long feel-off because it's a 10-minute round, the other two are two five-minute rounds, uh, Mesger can do the sprint round this next round if he wants to. But the problem is this. Yamamoto, even though he's got basic skills, is fairly good at lasting and defending and even countering a little bit. He hasn't caught Guy cleanly, but he's been throwing counter shots. Yes, yes, and that makes it uh, uh, for your opponent, for Guy, you know, not so free. You don't want to attack that much because you know there is a counter, and if the counter is going to hit you, there's always a possibility of going down. So it makes you a little bit more aware of your opponent. And here we go with round two. Uh oh, looks like we had an unintentional low blow. Yep. Uh, 
Right on the A of the UFC. Here we go. Right on the A. Mesger has been the second part of some of the greatest fights in the Pride Fighting Championship. When he fought Dr. Robin, it was a great match. When he fought Vanderlei Silva, it was an unbelievable match. When he fought Chuck Liddell, it was an unbelievable match. Arona. Arona was a great match. He's been in with some of the greatest fighters, and he's always given 100%. Do you think it's possible that uh, Yamamoto, at this rate, will go the distance with Guy Mesger? Yes, I think it is. Um, he's clearly trying to avoid the real strong punches. But uh, Guy isn't pressing the action either. No. He's not pressing the action. He, I think he should be more aggressive here. Yeah, but he's picking his shots. You know, he knows there's not a round. Uh, not a five-minute round, so he's just picking his shots. Well, if you're going to go for fight of the year, you're going to have to do more than pick your shots. Though. Yeah, that's true. Oh, look at that. Nice high kick. Yeah, inside low kick would be good. There, we that go was with a good, good left hook by Mesger on the inside, but it didn't seem to phase Yamamoto. Even with the knockdown, boss, which was a lot about footing and and the, and the right hand of Mesger, Mesger hasn't been really able to to really really hurt Yamamoto yet. He's lumped him up a little bit, but he hasn't really had him ready to go yet. Yep, yeah, you're right, but he's. Like I said, you know, he's, he, he's got the right distance, the right distance to avoid the punch. He's staying out of the striking range all the time. He's moving backwards. Uh, he's countering, actually also blocking. He, he obviously trained real hard with Sakuraba Kev. He can take a shot, though, like that right hand. There you go. Yeah, guy's just waiting for it. Winging right hand missed. I'm not saying Yamamoto is ready for K1 just yet, but he's impressed me with the stand-up in this fight, at least in the survival mode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not in the attacking. Ooh, nice left hook. He's got a hard head. He really does. Yeah, he doesn't. He didn't even move his head. Nice, right. Nice! Talk about a hard head. Mesger kicked him right in the head with that left roundhouse kick, and it didn't do anything. It was shades of Mesger's fight with Arona. It was the left roundhouse kick. It didn't even phase Yamamoto. Yamamoto a little bit cut up now. Yeah, he doesn't want to fight now. Now is the time for Guy to go knee to the head. Yes, very nice. He yeah, Yamamoto doesn't want to fight right now. No, Yamamoto. He's going like this, it's going to be over. Yeah. Ooh! He's going to fight with a high kick. Like I said before, Guy Mesger is strong in the second round. And right when he was starting to lull Yamamoto to sleep with technique, he blasted him with power. Good thing that left roundhouse kick wasn't a shin kick. Otherwise, the fight would have been over. He caught him with a foot. It was beautiful. Uh, I'm going to see the replay of that. That's going to be beautiful. That's going to make somebody's hi highlight reel. Yep. He's got to go now. Ooh, and another high kick. Another high kick. Barely clipped. Yamamoto pulling back. I would have to say the greatest high kick in Pride Fighting Championship history was Gilbert Ivan with Gary Goodridge, though. That was a high kick. Wow. Yeah, they asked me a couple of days ago, you remember, the yeah. greatest knockout, and that was my... The fight, the greatest knockout in pride was the left high kick. 30 seconds. See, guy is just very steady, total control, picking his shots, doing exactly what he needs to do. Yamamoto is just there, being a very hard head. <laughs> just can't take an enormous punch. Do you think Nesger is too patient here? Uh, no, I don't think so, because he, he, he had some flurries, and uh, I think he's just pacing himself. And then so he has, uh, especially against his fight against Arona, and in round number three, that was his worst round, and he doesn't want to have that anymore, so he's facing himself. But realistically, Yamamoto's no Arona. 
I know, but you know, if you can throw, if you throw yourself all the way out in round number two, even though Yamamoto is not an Arona, it could be very big trouble for you in round number two, uh, three. Right. So no, guy, the experienced fighter that he is, I think he did the right thing. Here we go, and we're going to see the highlight here of Mesger cracking, and it was, thank God, it was only the instep, folks. It looked great, but it didn't land with the kind of power that you needed for a knockout. And here we go again. Buck! It was almost a front kick. Yeah, a front nose kick. It was a punt kick. <laughs> Round number three. <laughs> What's going to happen? Well, a lot of people thought that he was going to go right through Yamamoto in the first round and just clip him quickly, but that has not happened. It might be largely due to that man on the left, Kazushi Sakuraba. Sakuraba, practically a national hero here in Japan for some of his great fights. Even, even in losing to Vanderlei Silva, I don't think it tarnished his legacy at all because of the weight differential, the way he fought, I mean, and there's my Daijiro Matsui, the, <laughs> the guy that can't get no respect, and he's been in some of the greatest fights in Pride, too. Yeah, he's got my respect. That's what I think for sure. Oh, yeah, me too. Round three. You see, guy looks good now. Uh, but Yamamoto has to know that he's behind in this fight. And although in the Pride Fighting Championships they score the fight as a whole, rather than tallying up the individual rounds and whoever won more rounds than the other wins. Uh, Yamamoto has got to know that he's got to do some damage. He's got to pick up the pace and he's got to make Mesger pay for what he's done for the first two rounds to him. Yep. Can he do that? Because I don't think so. Because of that reason that you just said. Because he's going to open him, make sure. he's going to open himself up for a counterattack, and Guy will exploit that. Guy knows that Yamamoto has got to become aggressive here, so he's going to be waiting with a big shot for him. There we go. He's got to throw right up a cut more. If he ducks that way, it'll be a good hit there. Right up a cut, left hook. There. Nice left hook. Well, Yamamoto has never really been stopped by a regular human being. He has been stopped by Sammy Schilt, who's seven feet tall. Oh, they're brawling here. And he has been stopped by Bob Sapp, and he was also stopped by Ricardo Morais. But most of those guys are like in another species. They're so big. They're 300 pound guys, 6'5 to 7 feet tall, who knows what. Uh, so he uh, knows what it's like to be blasted by, you know, a battering ram. So Mesger has had to put together his shots to lump him up, bust him up, got the knockdown in the first round. Yeah, he's got to step it up. He's got to watch out that he's um, not slowing down, and Yamamoto's going to load up at the end. Well, I, I, I'd like to see Guy get more aggressive here. This. I mean, it's because he's, he's got a certain pace. He'll throw a couple shots and he'll back off. Throw a yep. couple shots. He's definitely not fighting uh, reminiscent of a shoot box fighter or anything. He's more of a, it's a technical fight. That was a good right hand. Too bad it didn't do much. Oh, yes. It stunned him for a second. Well, why didn't he jump on him? I don't know. It's like he's not, it's, it's like he doesn't want to. He, if he lands another one like that, he could finish the fight. There we go again. You gotta keep going now. But it's three minutes, and you heard that. Three minutes. Come on, kick him, kick him, kick him. What happened? No, I don't know. This could be the end. I mean, there, there's scientific fighting, but he, he had a clear chance to win the fight with a high kick. Yes, right high kick. Nice. I mean, it's like he's, he's got, the guy's got his hands down. Why did he just throw a high kick? Right or wrong? You're right, but uh, I, I think, listen, what, what I thought Kosaga, I told him, 
in my in my state there also everybody say, oh, why is she waiting? Why is she waiting? I just told my corner, tell me one minute. When I got one minute, I throw all my energy out and I go for the knockout, and I did. So maybe that guy's doing that. Uh, you know, that's right up cut again. He's got to follow it up. But still, you know, three minutes is a long time. But this this fight is quite a bit different than your fight with Kosaka. That is true. That is true. I mean, Yamamoto is done. Yeah, Yamamoto hasn't really been offensive, you know, for the, the last round and a half, at least. Yeah, I think that a guy will look for a knockout in about 30 seconds or something. Once you start really hitting it like there and throw a knee to the head, something like that, it's going to happen. Right there. Yep. He's, he, he seemingly got opportunities to blast him. And Yamamoto really rolled with that kick. They got a fight. The referee saying fight. Do you think it's possible that Mezger didn't train as intensely for Yamamoto because he didn't have the kind of respect he did for him as he, as he was for Arona or Vandalay? No, I think, I think he did. I think it just, everything together, people don't realize once you're standing in that ring, you know, you don't have unlimited energy. And, and uh, you, you unless you're fresh. Unless you're ninja. Unless you're ninja, yeah. You're 21 years old. I'm not 35. So, um... People, uh, he, he may look fresh, but he can be real tired. Because if he would have unlimited <laughs> energy, he would have collapsed his way right now. Okay, we're down to 30 seconds left. Mezger, Mezger, a clean knockdown with the right hand. He's got to go, though. Clean knockdown. He could finish him right here if he wanted to. Yep, he's got to go. So that's the tank, but I told you before. He's tired also. Knee him to the hat. Nice, nice. Yeah, at least he's going to come out with this. Oh. Okay, Mezger finishing with a flurry. No doubt, a lopsided one where Mezger got his work in. Three solid rounds. Ten minutes, five minutes, and five minutes. Twenty minutes total. And Yamamoto, really, gosh, what, what, what can you say? I mean, I think if Guy Mesger had little respect for Yamamoto before this fight, he sure had respect for him afterwards because Yamamoto even said during the fight, you know, that the guy was tough. I mean, that, that's a crushing right hand right here. Bam. 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 Yamamoto pops back up. Yeah, he just showed that he could take a punch. That's one thing for sure. And uh, that's the only reason that he's still standing there. He took some hard shots. Uh, fight uh, guy fought a very technical fight. Solid. He didn't throw away a lot of energy. So easy win for him. Okay, Guy Mesmer gets the slam dunk, unanimous decision. And now he's going to move on to bigger and brighter things, like hopefully that rematch with Arona. Yeah, that's